Hey everyone, it's been a while since we've had a podcast, so uh, we are going to pick up today with looking at the ratio of the surface area to volume of a cell of cells. Okay, and this ties in with osmosis and diffusion. Uh, so this this is looking at how uh, ions or water or other small macromolecules move into and through a cell. Um, but this kind of answers the question is why don't cells get huge? Why aren't cells absolutely gigantic? And it has to do with the surface area to volume ratio. And what cells want, they want they want a high surface area to volume ratio. So in other words, they want a lot of space for things to diffuse in in comparison to the volume. So let's draw a picture. We are going to do, we're going to use a cube as an example. Okay. Uh, so if you want to sketch this cube out, my fantastic art skills. And this cube is going to be five centimeters on every side. Five centimeters. And we need to do two simple calculations. Okay, first we need to find the surface area. And to do that, you do the length times the width, and you multiply or you add together all of the sides. So this will be for each side, and you add them together. So for our cell, for our cube, we'll do it in blue, our length is five and our width is five. So we will do five times five equals 25. And I've got six sides. I've got one, two, three, and then four on the back. If we draw some dotted lines in here, like that. We've got the back side, the bottom, and then the left as well. So five times five, you can do that six times, or you can do 25 times six, and that gives us a surface area of 150 centimeters squared. Okay, so that's just simple, you know, geometry. For the volume, okay, this is, we've done this with density. For this object, remember this is length times width times height. And I'll only give you regular volumes. So you're not going to have any funny, you know, like spherical things or anything like that. We can do it for a sphere, but for this, for the purpose of the experiment, we'll just use a cube. And this is the volume of the, the cell. You don't need to do anything else special for it. So we'll take... Our measurements, we've got five, five, and five for the length, the, this is the height, the length, or the width, sorry, and the length. So we've got five times five times five. And what this works out to is 150, or I'm sorry, not 150, 125 centimeters cubed. So our ratio of surface area to volume ends up being 150 to 125, or we can simplify this down to 6 to 5. Okay, So this cell would be a good example because it's got a high surface area for its volume. It's got a larger surface area for its volume, which means things can diffuse in very easily. If we change this though, let me scroll down. Let's say we have a cell that's 10 by 10 by 10. So um, I'll draw another picture just so we can see it, and then we'll do some quick math. Okay, So a little bit larger still cube shaped, goes back up to the side, like that, and we'll put in some dotted lines. Okay, a little lopsided, but that's okay. So our surface area then, and this is a 10 by 10 by 10. And so what we end up with for this one, for the surface area, remember do length times width, so 10 times 10 is 100. And then we multiply that by the six sides. So our surface area for this one is 600 centimeters squared. For the volume, same process. It's still a cube. Let me switch back to blue. Sorry, back to black. So the volume, this is length times width times height. So 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 times 10 now gives us a volume of 10 times 10 is 100 times another 10 is 1,000 centimeters cubed. So our ratio for this one, taking these, we can say it at 600 to 1,000, or we can say it's a 6 to 10. 
That means the volume of this cell is much larger than the available surface area to diffuse. So why is this important? This is what we're going to be talking about in the lab. So please come with questions and come with possible reasons why we want a small surface area, or I'm sorry, a large surface area to a small volume rather than the other way around.